Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going with our, uh, our um, Monday show. Let me make sure that we're on over here. Hold on a second. Uh, let me turn that off and let me go over and see that we're, uh, we're uh, uh, up and running. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep, there we go. Okay, there we go. Let me see here. Where are we? Let me put on my earphones. This is kind of a casual show. We do nothing special here. We just uh, just talk to people, have a nice, pleasant conversation. Edward Berger, I don't know who Edward Berger is, but uh, maybe I will. Steve Bender is here. Uh, Rick Sheckman is about to be admitted. Uh, Charlie Wallace. Uh, Len is about to be admitted. Brian Neary is about to be admitted. And... Uh, let me see here. That's um, that's a whole bunch of people already. Hello, everybody. How are you on this? Hey. One? Good. Yeah, it's your, uh, Edward Berger. Of course, I remember you. Edward. Uh, from last week. How can I forget that voice? <laughs> that's the voice. <laughs> that is a voice. If there ever was a voice, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so how are you all? Did you all have a nice weekend? Lovely. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> Thanks for Stand calling. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Nice chatting with you. <laughs> Here comes Marjorie. There we go. There she is. Yeah, there's Marjorie, ladies and gentlemen. Um, she runs, uh, she runs HR. Are you, are you there, Marjorie? I'm here. You can hear us? Okay. She, uh, she runs HR for GabMax. <laughs> so, anyway. Mm. I'm setting up. Huh? I'm setting up. Oh, okay. There you go. Now we can hear you. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, I call her HR for GabNet because she uh, she's doing all the work on getting our insurance together. <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah. The it's a full-time job. Huh? It's a mess. It's a mess. You know, I mean... Um, the only good thing about me having a job is they pay a hundred percent. Yeah, your mic is a little low, Marjorie. For some reason. Huh? How's that? Uh, a little bit. That little better? Bit. Yeah, I guess. Well, we now we're seeing your crotch. What are we doing? <laughs> is that better? Yeah, it's still low. I I don't know why. You may if you could, if you can go into your preferences, maybe turn up your volume on your mic. Well, I have it on the iPad up as high as it could go. No, well, that oh, the, no. The, no, you have to go I, into Zoom. I have to go into Zoom. Yeah, they have a preference. I'm gonna fuck it up. Huh? I won't. Talk, I won't talk. I'll just listen. Okay, so you can talk. <laughs> Boy, my eyes are burning today. Yeah, well, out here in California, your eyes would be burning when you see this. Let me show oh you. Oh my God! Current air quality. Oh. Oh God. my God! Oh, and that that's... and that's getting better. Yeah. Today yeah. and tomorrow, tomorrow there's supposed to be some breezes to bring everything up, like uh, up to northern uh, Nevada. Yeah. And Friday it's supposed to be turning back around and bring it back this way. So. Um, oh God! Oh, I can't that... even imagine what you guys are going through. You yeah, can't I, go outside for more than an hour, so your eyes start burning. You can't breathe. It's terrible. Actually, the air quality here is really nice, isn't it? No, but my <laughs> eyes have been burning. My eyes have been burning all day. Yeah. Me too. Is that your eyes burning at all? No. No. Okay. I came from an air conditioned office to an air conditioned bus, and I was freezing when I got off. Maybe you should lay off the beans, Alex. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> So, Shecky, you know what I've been doing? No, what have you been doing? Watching Tell us, of, Alex. Watching lots of Letterman on YouTube. <laughs> First, I did all the anniversary shows. Mm. And then uh, uh, just a whole bunch of other shows. The last show we ever did at NBC. That was a good show. That was a good show. Uh, and I, I did, you know something? Those shows hold up. Hmm. They're just nutty enough that they hold up. You know, Did you see the link I sent you to the Ask Mr. Melman segments? Yes. Yes. Where he was doing Bernard Meltzer. Bernie Meltzer. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was not one aware of pomp- one of the most pompous guests we ever had. Who, Bernie Meltzer? Yeah. Yeah. It was Bernie Meltzer. Uh, well, uh, uh, I hardly knew a Bernie Meltzer, but people in New York knew a Bernie Meltzer. Uh, uh, Steve? Dr. Mm-hmm. Meltzer. You have to call him by his. Dr. <laughs> Bernard. Apparently, he got what? his degree from a mail order. <laughs> Jackie, what was he? He was an advice or supposed advice person on WOR from 8 to 10 or 11 at night in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> and he would call in and go, Dr. Meltzer, I need help. What do I do about my name? You know, that kind of person. Oh, God. <laughs> and then he would always end the phone call with talking to his producer, Charlotte, give that caller two t shirts. <laughs> There's always two t shirts? Two t shirts, Charlotte. And you had to call him Dr. Meltzer. You couldn't call him Bernie, except, and I still remember this, I was driving across the Golden Gate Bridge back in the 80s visiting you. Yeah. And he had a weekly show on NBC Network. And on that show, he was Bernie. Oh, really? You could call him Bernie? He was supposed to call him Bernie. It was the Bernie Meltzer show. Thanks. But in New York, you didn't get two T-shirts if you didn't call him Dr. Meltzer. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> and his degree was in like economics from, now, a, what, they say, from a mail order. Company. I decided that I would get uh, nostalgic when I was looking at these Letterman shows. So on YouTube, I looked up uh, Letterman show San Francisco. And all, oh, all, all five episodes are there. Mm. And that was mm. when you came to visit. And they, God, did that did, did that town hate us? <laughs> what, uh, how did they hate right. you? Because we took over the um, Golden Gate Park, and the neighbors were complaining that we ruined their view of the lake. Oh. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Too no, much no, noise. Park? You mean the Palace of Fine Arts? Palace of Fine Arts. Yeah, but yeah. we parked across from the million multi million dollar homes our trucks, oh, and really? they all complained about it. Oh, I, I was one of the guys complaining. <laughs> uh, blocked away. <laughs> they just showed on 2020, they just, sh- or uh, 60 Minutes again, they showed the Joaquin Phoenix uh, oh. little interview thing, and they showed him on Letterman. Sound like very uncomfortable with him and not sure if he was joking or not. Was that, that true? That was all a put on, wasn't it? He was playing a character. Yeah. That was right. all right. They made that documentary, and that was his promotion for exactly. It. But, yeah, but, but he, he wouldn't bring character. No, he right. wouldn't. And, bring I, and I think character. that irritated the hell out of Letterman because he thought he was getting uh, what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what team? Yeah. It was also Joaquin. like the guy from Back to the Future tried to kick David. Uh, Whatever his name, you remember that? Lloyd. Have you seen that one, Lloyd? Alex? No, Christopher Lloyd. It was been in the anniversary shows. Wow. No. The guy who played, I think, the brother in Back to the Future. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Or the yeah, rival. Glover. I can't think of his name right now. Oh. Crispin Glover. Crispin Glover. Yeah. Crispin Glover. Yeah. yeah that, was a weird, that was a weird one. I remember oh, that. Yeah. The one where, you know, the guy goes, I'm strong. I right. can kick. And then he tried to kick Dave. <laughs> Dave kind of freaked out. <laughs> Dave didn't like that sort of thing, did he? No. No. There Dave Robin, walked off the show. Wasn't there a time when he wasn't that fond of having Robin Williams on his show because he felt he couldn't? Complain? Very early on. Yeah. Did he because, like? Because you know, and I always say this, and no offense to the late Robin, he was a chimp when he came on our show. <laughs> yeah. He would just run around the studio, and you know, he got better as he got older. Yeah. Did um? Did he like Andy Kaufman when he's on? Because it they oh, seem yeah. they seem to work very well together. Yeah, but Dave did not know about the Kaufman Lawler segment. Huh. That was totally an improv between Andy and Jerry. Very well, yeah. Oh, you know, the fight. The fight, yeah. Because, you know, when we did the anniversary shows, I'd be sitting in Dave's office with our little group putting him together, and we would watch that segment, no joke, at least a hundred times every year as we're trying to figure it out, you know, whether it was a setup or what was going on. And it would be like, Oh, you can see Andy moving his chair in a position, you know, 
Yeah. And Morty finally admitted he knew about it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the fight, the fake fight they did on Fridays with, um, yeah. but, they, but they knew about it, but the other people- They knew don't. about it, Bob Morton knew about it, right. but Dave did not. Right. right. Why was Dave left out of the loop? Because they felt it would be better if he didn't know. And better television. He, he, it becomes that fake, you know. Yeah, he, they, they were want, trying to they get a his reaction. They wanted to be genuine. Yeah. Yeah. And that's wrestling. I mean, wrestling is all kafabi, you know. Yeah. <laughs> kafabi. <laughs> kafabi. <laughs> kafabi. <laughs> then I watched, uh, they, had a, they had a little documentary they did on Bill Hicks and the, the whole situation with Dave and the Bill Hicks segment, why it never ran. Uh, Which it did eventually. Eventually, years later, after he was dead and he brought his mother he on dead. and apologized profusely. Um, well, it was so early on in the CBS show. I think it was show 32, maybe. They said that, it, was, it was within the first three or four weeks, something. It was pretty early. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. And once more, Morty knew it. Morty knew the segment, you know, not to yeah. throw blame on Robert. But he had vetted the act. So Bill was told, that's fine. Do it. Uh, and but then, then Dave the got was over. Dave and CBS got cold feet after the segment was taped. He went over to the hotel, thinking, "I just did the kind of set that a killer set. the killer set that will finally." He always felt that whenever he did the Letterman show or even did TV, he had to water down his act so much that people didn't really know who Bill Hicks was, and he felt that he had established who Bill Hicks was that night. I mean, because he called me the next day to talk about. It. Wow. Okay. And um, uh, he said he went back to the hotel, kind of patting himself on the back, going high fiving himself, you know, saying. Yeah. And then he gets this call from Bob Morton saying, "We're not going to run the segment." And uh, it really was tragic because, and I didn't know this. And then he I, died a few months later, or weeks well, later, or I, whatever. I didn't know this till till I saw this documentary. He already knew he had pancreatic cancer when he did that set on your show. Uh, it hadn't progressed to a, a horrible point, but it had gotten, it, it, it was going to get there. Uh, and he uh, uh, just, um, so he had it at that point. And I remember that, that when he died, I had gone to, I think I had gone to uh, uh, Caroline's or something and met up with a comic and it was the day it happened. And he said, do you hear what happened? It was, you know, um, Bill Hicks died. And of course, I felt terrible because I knew Bill, and I, you know, I, 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 I didn't know he was sick. Nobody knew he was sick, and I called you. I remember calling you. Yeah. And I yeah. said, uh, "Did you hear about Bill Hicks?" And your reaction was, "What did he do now?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "I think my reply was, he died." <laughs> and you were, I, you, I. I swear, I've never known you to be speechless, but I think you didn't utter a word after it. You know, and had that set happened six months later, it would have aired. It was just so... It was so... Didn't after the CBS yeah. Well, because everybody was saying, oh, Dave will never make it at, at uh, 11. Yeah, we were trying to put on a different, at that point, we were trying to be a adults. different image. Yeah, the, the other show was a show put on by kids, and this was a show supposedly that was put on by adults. Am I right? Would that be the best way yeah. to describe it? Yeah. You know, it was Dave's Fun House at NBC. Yeah. And at CBS, it was Dave's Ed Sullivan show, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. The, the NBC shows, when I go back and I watch it, I mean, both shows were terrific. But the NBC shows, I thought, were very special. They just were yeah. so inventive, and nobody had anything to lose, you know? You know, and also we couldn't get certain guests because Carson had, a, you know, there was a list every day had to be sent to Carson people. And, you know, no, you can't have Alex Bennett on. Well, no, we should mention, have, people don't know this, but the first half hour of the Letterman show was owned by Carson. By Carson. Until, yes. he, until Carson went off the air, he owned 1230 to 1. Yeah, because the claim oh. was when he signed his contracts in later years, hey, whatever goes on after me is going to benefit from my lead-in, so I want to own part of the show. 
Yeah, and also because he owned, he had done a 90-minute show. So when he cut back to 60, he still kept control of the last half hour. Okay. As to what could be on there. Because he nixed at one point Steve Allen was supposed to take over that show, I think around 1979 or 80. Mm -hmm. And he didn't want Steve Allen. Yeah, why didn't he want Steve? Which is probably a good move. Carson but. didn't want Steve out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but And that's uh, eventually... It, am I right or wrong, but on those early shows, you I think you told me or somebody told me that Dave could only do three jokes. That yes, that was a Carson eating. It was a Carson eating. I do a monologue, eat. and that's why they were called opening remarks. Well, they weren't called They weren't called a monologue, huh? No, they were opening remarks. Oh, okay. And it was like three of them. If I, I think you're correct on that. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't anything nasty on, on Carson's part. He was just protecting. No, himself. he just felt, you know, and that's what I'm saying. Like, we couldn't have new heart. We couldn't, you know, there's that, there was a list of people who, you know, were Carson, quote, regulars, and we couldn't have them. Well, so bye bye. But, you know, what that forced you to do was to come up with your own kind of regular. Uh, yeah, you know, so people like Leno were one of your regulars, isn't he? Yeah, and he was not a Carson regular at that point, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, or Richard Lew or Richard Lewis, or a lot of those other comics that he had on in those. Brother Theodore, movies. for instance. Or Brother Theodore. Yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, he was never going to want that. So. Yeah. Anyway, watching these things, YouTube has just become this endless source of entertainment. I, well, I've been watching the Jack Benny Shower of Stars over the weekend, Jack which is a one-hour show he would do like once a month. What are they called? Shower of Stars? Uh, Jackie Gleason did a show called no. Shower of Stars at DuPont. That was his original show. No, this was a CBS show. Uh -huh. It was done live at a television city, and Jack was the star of it. Oh, okay. oh, it was called Shower of Stars, but it wasn't called Jack Benny Shower of Stars. No, with your guest, Jack Benny, whomever, you know. Okay. And was it a weekly show and they just had rotating hosts? No, it was like once, it was like once a month. Yeah. And then other weeks, there was a show called Climax, which was like a live drama, Playhouse 90 type show, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Jack would do it like once a month. Is and had his writers do it. Because yeah. if you look at the credits, it's the Jack Benny writers. Yeah. But there was a there was a great um, um, there was a show, which really became a catch all for for ABC. But it, it some of those shows were pretty great. The Hollywood Palace. Hollywood Palace. Yeah, that's they're all I, on YouTube. All of them are first, there. That's where I first saw the Rolling Stones. I remember they put them on. Hollywood Palace was on late, right? So the Beatles could be on Sullivan, but the Stones were kind of nastier. So they put yeah. them on Hollywood Palace. Yeah. <laughs> Palace, I think Saturday nights, if I remember. correctly. They always, had, they, always had, they always had different hosts. Different you know. hosts. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, and your host of the week is, and it was different from remember, this studio at Hollywood. Do you remember when Ed Sullivan with Elvis Presley, they didn't show the camera from, yeah, from the, the waist, waist up. up? Yeah. <laughs> Only from the waist so up. Sullivan didn't host that night. It was Charles Lawton. Oh, really? Charles really? Lawton, that's a good one. Good call, yeah. See, Ed Sullivan did, did the same thing my for boy, me. My boy knows his stuff. Yes, Steve, he does. Steve Allen made Elvis sing to an actual hound dog. <laughs> yes, me, he did. Didn't you, didn't you tell me that when the Beatles appeared on Sullivan, the segments with the Beatles were pre-taped? No. 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 no? The Miami show was pre-taped. Miami, yeah. Uh, but no. But I, you, I, I think you told me that he did something because he didn't, or the rest of the show was taped, because he didn't, the, he, the audience for the Beatles were all screaming and everything, and he didn't want to have to come back to the regular show. No, no. Oh, really? Then how did he calm down all those girls and sit around and watch, I don't know, whoever the comedian was that night? I don't know. He brought out Jack Leskowitz to do a commercial. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, who, who was the comedian on that show that tried, followed the Beatles? It was awful. I don't. I'm trying to. Was think. it Alan King? No, it was, I don't think it was. Alan. No, it was somebody. Somebody. Uh, a well, good Martin and Rossi were on one of them. <laughs> Martin and Rossi. Yeah. I mean, imagine trying to follow the Beatles with that audience of young girls who were screaming minutes before. Right. Yeah. 
I seem to have remembered something that that, that he pre-taped that for that very reason, so he could have a different audience in there for the rest of the show. No, no, no. Not really? at least the New York shows. The Miami show was on tape. Yeah. And the Miami, but, show, the Miami shows were in color. Well, no, they, it was the last Sullivan show that they appeared on. Was that coming from Miami? Uh-huh, yeah. And then Elvis first appeared on, if you, I don't know if you remember, the, the Tommy, stage show. Yeah, the, the, the Tommy and Jim Dorsey show. It's interesting. When That's where he made his TV debut. When you talk about Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey, ran a show called Stage Show, and that's where Elvis- Which was owned by Gleason. That was the Gleason, Gleason show. Gleason. It was a summer replacement for Gleason. But it was television, yes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the thing that's yeah. interesting is, Tommy Dorsey introduces Elvis Presley. What did he do Elvis. many years earlier? Frank. Frank Sinatra, you know, so I'm I- yeah, interesting. I'm just reading something here. It's very interesting. It says, after the Beatles did their first couple of songs, Sullivan tried to quiet everyone down and introduced Fred Capps. <laughs> Fred Capps? Fred Capps, K-A-P-S. And he did five minutes with the audience not really listening. And then Charlie Brill and Mitzi McCall. Yeah. Okay who said they couldn't hear each other because of the screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and the Beatles came back on. Yeah. I went to an imitation, but you kids, quiet down. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, isn't it amazing that, you know, I'd hate to be anybody who had to follow the Beatles. You well, know? Look what it did for Fred Capp's career. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of Fred Capp. Who ever heard of Fred Capp? I gotta look him up. There are, there are all these people that appeared on, um, on those kinds of shows. Yeah, that were very, great spinners. Yeah, but they were, they, 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 I remember for this one guy named Kuda Bucks. Do you, Kuda, you yeah. Kuda Bucks? Stuff over his eyes. I yeah. Read your mind. He put putty over his eyes and then he would have like a vat of water and a vat of acid and he wouldn't <laughs> figure out which one to put his hand in. Uh, but Kuda Bucks was the guy who would put putty on his eyes and then do all kinds of dangerous things. Senior uh, Wences? Well, seeing yeah. the answer, there, there is actually in New York, in fact, isn't it next to Ed Sullivan Theater? 54th Street, Street is Senior Wences Way. Right. Senior right. Wences right. Way, yeah. And they, they called it that it's because that was the Ed Sullivan Theater. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> you know who I was thinking about the other day who's on all these shows? Bill Dana and Jose Jimenez. Yeah. Uh, you can never get away with that nowadays. Okay. You, you couldn't he's begin to do it. You begin. He's totally yeah. canceled. That he was so funny. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, he started with Steve Allen. Right. He was on the Steve Allen show. Yeah. Wasn't there a half-hour sitcom? He was actually a writer for yeah. Allen, wasn't he? Yeah. What? He, he was, was a writer on the yeah. Steve Allen show, and yeah. then the, uh, there was a half-hour sitcom in '63, the Jose Jimenez show. Jose Jimenez show. Which came out of the Danny Thomas stable because. Jose Jimenez was on the Danny Thomas show playing the character. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I keep trying to give names out like Kuda Bucks and hope that I, I Shecky goes, who? <laughs> you know, but I can't, I've never been able to get Shecky to go, who? You know, okay. The Step Brothers. Who? The Step Brothers. <laughs> who? Okay. <laughs> I got him. The Step Brothers were a, uh, a, a bunch of black brothers who tap danced, and they were called the Step Brothers. Oh, look who's coming in to pay a visit here! Oh, uh, look, huh? look, look! The poster child for muscular dystrophy. Here she is. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's see her. Let's see her. Oh, hey, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. He's goodbye. making her entrance. <laughs> That's Bye. all you need. Bye. 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 <laughs> Hi. 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 Uh, Hi. What are you doing? Tell them what you're doing. What are you doing? I, I'm in school. I see the school. Yeah. He's doing the uh, the um, virtual online virtual learning. school thing. How's that? How's it working out? Is it good? Uh, is it uh, working out good. okay for you, Adrian? Do you yes. enjoy going to school, looking at your iPad or your computer? 
<laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello. Okay. She's done with lunch. Oh, okay. she's got her iPad with her. Okay, say goodbye. Hello, hello, mom. <laughs> say goodbye. <laughs> what did she say? Okay. See, at one thirty, she's back. So. Yeah. <laughs> she speaks a different language. I don't know what she speaks. She sings it and she talks it like nonstop. She's so committed to it, which is good. But really, it's oh, adorable. Good. Oh, dear. So the step, the step brothers did not go on to great fame, like Heinz Heinz and Dad or anything. Well, Heinz Heinz and Dad. You remember Heinz Heinz and Dad, right? Oh yeah. 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 Awesome. yeah. Gregory Heinz and his brother and Dad. The and Dad. Pops. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, of course, what uh, was the Coppola movie they were in together? Cotton Club. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then you had the Will Mashton trio. Of course, with <laughs> Sammy. Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. Wow. In fact, he he kept using them for years after he made it, right? Yeah. Well, it was, it was his <laughs> uncle Will Mashton was his uncle, and then his dad was also, I think, in the act. Yeah. I think it was three. Yeah. Yeah. So Alex, remind me again why millennials don't jump on this call. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't want to learn. <laughs> no one wants to talk to old people. Well, no, no, yeah, we have. We were thinking. Marjorie and I were thinking of starting a a, a show uh, here on Gabnet called "Nobody Likes to Watch Old People." Or talk to old people. You know, uh, yeah, but, but go look at page six. Have any of you? You, you guys are out of town. I've never heard of any of these people. <laughs> oh, you mean, well, we I'm probably with the last generation. What's the one that we watched TMZ? Have yeah. you watched that? No. Never. You know it's anyone it's anyone an hour of gossip there? about people you never heard of. Yeah. We watch it because we want to be cool. I, I only joined this call so I could be one of the youngest people in the room for a change. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you know, person X is leaving the real housewives of some city. I have no idea who they are. Yeah. And do we care? And we don't care. Mm -hmm. But obviously, or, you know, person X is going to be on Dancing with the Stars this month, this year. I don't know who they are. Yeah. Our, 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 our but song. we watch it. We watch TMZ just so we can become current. <laughs> we we're we're watch it be current. Like Cardi B or D or Cardi whatever. B, like, Cardi B. Having a feud with some other woman. <laughs> Who cares yeah. and who are they? If, if you showed me a picture of a bunch of people and one of them is Cardi B, I could tell you which one is Cardi B. She's got the B. long fingernails. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a big boob. You know, I'm, I, I'm not that out, so out of the loop that I, I don't know some of these things. But most of them. Oh, hey, but you ever heard her perform? No. No. They say on TMB, you, want to? you, remember no. His great, you remember his great song, Blah, 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 and I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of so it's pe people who are famous for, for quote being famous and paying a PR agent enough money to get their name in the paper. Mm. Now, on the other hand, I can uh, you know I can name a lot of uh, Lady Gaga songs because I like Lady Gaga, you know. Um, but oh, look who's here! Your old friend <laughs> Shecky. What, uh. Tony? Tony? Tony. Anthony. Tony. Tony. <laughs> I don't see Connect him. Connect your audio, Tony. Where are you? I'm walking to the chink store to get my mother egg oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had a call you. I'm listening to the whole show. Now. <laughs> You're going to the whoops. This <laughs> cannot be not monetized for sure. <laughs> Cuomo didn't close things down yet, so I got to take it to go. He's never going to let us eat this guy. Yeah, never. I've tried for I don't know how long on our nighttime show to let him know that that term is not proper. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, what term, Alex? What term? Chinese food. <laughs> you never abbreviates a slur for heard, Chinese food. You never heard Chinese food called chinks before? <laughs> My mother's going out for the chinks for about four. Uh, Alex. I, I don't know if I told you this yet. You remember when they talked fast? My mother used to say column A, column B. We never understood what they said. What did he say again? Because they go, da, 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 da. what? Just slow yeah, down no, and wait, take it from the top. You also, you know. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Jeez. I listened to the whole show. It's really good. I didn't know that was a, he didn't know Dave about Jerry Lawler. I remember watching it. What? Did Andy Kaufman. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I tell you, Alex, is Andrew Cuomo going to let us open <laughs> To eat is Andrew this Cuomo going to let us open? You're lucky if Andrew Cuomo lets you go get chins. Yeah. I know. I'm going to go there. I'm going to have to pay the guy off and get food. If you're this Chinese and you're watching this program, please don't think I'm being terrible. I'm making fun of yeah. I don't world. think so. I think you're being yeah. horrible. The views, <laughs> the views of the participants do not reflect the views of the host. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, my wife works. Chinese, okay, so let's, I know. You know, let's, not, nice. let's, let's not think that I, I approve of the use of that term, okay, Tom. Hey, Tom. but there are some people out in Queens who are still not up to date on what's right and what's wrong. So. That's true, and I'm one of them. Oh. All right, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Alex. Look at the skies out there. It looks like it's going to rain. It's nice. Yeah, it looks like they're doing something over here. What are you looking at? I don't know what you're looking at. They're doing like a crane. They're smashing By the all way, the concrete up. Say, can I just We're say doing right, the now, right now, your teeth My are looking school. good. I know. <laughs> My old school, like I hate. <laughs> school I hate with a passion. My old middle school. Oh. Your old middle school? Yeah, 73. This, this is just like a jail. Good thing I was in the small classes because if you went in the basement, they're ready to go to prison. I think. Wait you went, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You went to the smart classes? Well, yeah, I was in advanced class. Is, is that just what they told you? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's what they told us. That's what I, that's what I believe. What am I doing this <laughs> Everybody else is sniffing glue in the back. All right, don't worry about it. I mm. won't. Are, they, are they at school over there? Actually, they don't start. My sister don't start. They don't start to the 21st. With kids, but I think they're going to go on strike, Alex. The union is pushing back, man. Because teachers are testing positive. Well, oh, you know what I'm gonna tell you? Should we do five minutes on how our mayor's a moron, Shecky? <laughs> yeah. I'm I gonna hang up about in a the What'd you say? I'm gonna hang I, up. Why are you gonna hang up? Because I have oh, other sure. stuff to do. No, you don't. <laughs> it's a busy day. Come on. Leave Come on. This is a, the most people we've had on our Saturday, oh. our, our, our show. It's Monday. Tony's yeah. going to leave now. And yeah, I'm going to talk to Chucky. Yeah. I'll be today, up to you tomorrow. Okay, Marjorie, this I'll is see you later, Chucky. If I, I, I can Bye. Bye, Tony. Bye, Tony. Bye, Marjorie. Bye, Tony. Bye. Bye, Tony. Bye, Bye Okay. Mm -hmm. so, Enjoy your ethnic food. We're back to nine of us. <laughs> You see, I mean, I've tried to tell him for years that that is what? not the proper term for Chinese food. <laughs> but I suppose if you're raised all your life to think that is the word for Chinese food, then I guess that's the word for Chinese food. What does it's he like, call it? Hmm? Just what think of a slang that chinks. Oh, 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 okay, okay, I got okay, it. Okay, don't ever use that at your office. You won't have a job in the long time. You'd be fired instantly. You know, it's kind of, I work for the Chinese. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I do. It's kind of like when I worked in, um, uh, in Houston, and I had somebody call me up one night and use the N-word. And I said, that's not really proper. And, and the guy said to me, he said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, he said, that's just what I was raised to say. You know, and so there was no, it's the first time in my life I heard that someone say it without meaning it in a hateful way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. You live in Texas, Charlie. Yeah. There's some people that was just a word they were raised to, to say. Yeah. You know. Um, in, in Mandarin, Alex, there's a word that when a, when a Chinese person is thinking, they, they go niga, meaning I'm, I'm thinking it's a, it's a thinking moment. And when it's pronounced properly, it sounds like the N word. Yeah. And I've been, in, I've been in Hong Kong and otherwise where someone's speaking. Did you and, read the recent article about this? No, no, I just, I used to be able this to. This is amazing because a professor at USC who teaches linguistics was talking about filler words to his class, like the way we use like and um, and use yeah. that as an example in Chinese. And they took the course away from him because the black student union complained, oh, even yeah. though the word has nothing to do with the word. Oh, Let me tell you a story real, real quick, because oh, I, I didn't hear that before, but it's, I remember watching a, a, a US military guy hearing someone keep using the word and getting mad because he thought they were using the N word. 
And I had, I stopped him from actually proceeding and said, you don't understand what you're hearing is pronunciation in another language that sounds like a bad word. I had to go through it. Yeah. I, I told a joke here about a, a couple of weeks ago, an old red fox joke that the guy goes, <laughs> the lady goes to the doctor and says, this, these hormone pills are horrible. They're, and he, what's the problem? Well, there's hair growing on my chest. And the doctor says, oh my God, lady, how far down does the hair go? And she goes all the way to my dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told that joke and my, my 22 year old daughter <laughs> heard the joke and got mad because I'm making fun of trans people. Oh. It's like you can't read you can't read Harry Potter books anymore because of well, J.K. Rowling said something. I thought it was one of the funniest things I'd heard in forever. I was, <laughs> how far you know? <laughs> boy, those pills are strong. But she she took it in a completely different light. Like I was making fun of trans. I I've, I've never made fun of a trans person in on, my adult life. On the nighttime show, I was talking with uh, Bobby Slake, comedian, and we were oh, talking yeah. about the fact there were certain comedians who, if they were around today. Would not he? He was even talking about the fact that certain parts of his act he can't use anymore. Yeah, uh, and and we were talking about Lenny Bruce, right? That Lenny, you know, just if you think he got in trouble back then, he got back tr in trouble back then for using four letter words. Today, he get in trouble for making fun of the Chinese, for instance. But you know, yeah. this is why comics won't work college campuses. Right, you know. Well, they, they, yeah, they said they can't stand the political correctness. You can't of say anything. Right? And, you know, I re I retired from teaching. You know, this this summer, largely because of this. Right, I did ten year, I did ten years on the stand up circuit. I taught for thirty five years, and I, you know, you can't say anything if it makes anybody ever feel slightly uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Yeah. But that's what comedy was. Yeah. Those are to challenge anybody. You can't challenge people's ideas. All opinions are equal. It's yeah. ridiculous. It was meant to make, you know, sometimes comedy is meant to make you feel uncomfortable. Of course. Supposed to. I'm guessing Rickles wouldn't make it in this Rickles? time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Rickles would probably be around today. Yeah. If you were alive, and he'd probably be allowed to perform, but he would have to modify his act. Sure. You know. Um, I think Bobby Slade is one of the funniest guys I've ever seen. I've seen him, you know, two dozen, three dozen times. Yeah. And, you know, I used to sit in the front row, so he'd pick on me. And I used to love it. You know, he'd make fun of my shirt, make fun of my mustache, make fun of whatever. And, and the two of us, have, we're not certainly not friends, but we're acquaintances now. And, and I love the guy. Well, for all intents and purposes, uh, he is no longer doing comedy. He says he's that right? quit the business. Yeah. He said, number one, because... There's no place to play right now. That's right. where he started. Uh, but also because of his age, that somehow they want nothing but young comics now. Yeah. You know, and because of the nature of his material, there's, sure. very, there's a lot of his act he can't do anymore. Wow. And he said, I well, he, you know, oh, he said, that doesn't make it fun for me. Yeah, well, and also he said, the, the most of the time he's working the nightclubs and the nightclubs are seeing people here for the weekend and, and right. those type of things where they're not in there to see him. But if you're in there to see him like a bigger venue, yeah, then yeah. everybody knows that kind of act and wants to see that. But, yeah, but you know what, with this cancel culture, people go to these shows knowing that that's what the comedian does yeah. just so that they can prove how woke they are. By right, they're looking for, it. it's, it's this performative wokeness. It's unbearable. Yeah. What is, okay, let me please see, here's where I'm getting the end, old man. What does woke exactly mean? <laughs> it means that you have all, you have all the right, enlightened, politically correct ideas. Oh, about so it. you're Absolutely. a woke is what the- You're not offending anyone. You mean, never um, offend anyone. Oh, right. you're, a, you're awake, is that what it means? It means awake, yeah. Or woke awake. is- that you're you're awoken to the new to the right. new reality of how we're, we're all we're, we're all I'll tell you if you're if yeah. you're woke then you're no fun at all yeah yeah no kidding you know you're not up for fun you're but not up like, for a good laugh you know if someone tells you they're enlightened you know they're full of shit yeah <laughs> if you're enlightened you don't say you're enlightened if you're woke if you under, have an understanding of the world then just live your life well and compassionately but Bobby, but Bobby Slayton used that they have a closing line something to the effect of just remember if you can't make fun of yourself make fun of other people yes. you know? yeah always I'm yeah. glad I got to see him uh, shortly before the pandemic started I, I went to see him at the punchline San Francisco and I guess now I'm glad I did <laughs> yeah 
You know, I'm, I'm very sad to hear that he would not continue to. to He's to doing that. Skechers commercials. Oh, no. I, I would end. The guy I would end a routine simple. If, if anyone in the audience was offended in any way by anything that I joked about tonight, yeah. you're yeah. welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. Well, did, yeah. Did, did, I mean, you know, uh, that like post, post the Louis C.K. stuff, right. the comedy seller had to change their whole policy and put up a sign in the club that if anyone was offended by anything, they could leave quietly and get their money back. Oh, brother. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. I mean, That's amazing. When has art of any kind been about putting you in your comfort zone? Well, actually, right. when people bring up Louis C.K., it really bothers me. What happened, what happened to him? Yeah. Uh, I mean, and that was because I mean, he was number two on the list after uh, some, very early yeah, on. Very after early after uh, who who was who was the the the, the, the actor? Guy? Huh? The actor. Oh, Stacy. Yeah. Yeah, he came like in number two. He came and, in in the beginning. And he really hasn't worked since. To, you know. No. Uh, so really he's doing, he's doing clubs and he has a special on his website that you could buy for five bucks. That's pretty funny. Um, but you know, Louis C.K. is one of the funniest guys I've ever yeah, met. I, I, I mean, yeah, the guy was selling out three nights in a row at the Garden. You know, twenty. Yeah, wow. Yeah, but he also he had his TV business was incredible because he not only had his show, but he had about three or four other shows right. he was producing right. as well. Yeah, it seems like a victimless crime to me. But well, well, here's what he here's what he's guilty <laughs> of. A, a three women said they were in in his hotel room. And he said, you don't mind if I whip my penis out, do you? <laughs> and none of them said no, so he whipped it out. <laughs> now, first of all, I have to say, what's he guilty of? Being a real gentleman? Yeah. You know, he asked permission before he whipped out his penis. <laughs> the door's oh, If somebody asked you that, Alex, and, do you mind and, if I do that? And the, the real woke part of this is none of these women walked out. <laughs> one, of them, I'm out of here. one of them i even believe i followed the story pretty closely one of them said she thought he was masturbating while she was on the phone with him <laughs> so my question hang up maybe yeah <laughs> or how do you know <laughs> how do you know he's jerking off on the phone yeah, two camera facetime i guess i mean is he talking like this i mean what's <laughs> You know, oh, I mean, yeah. I just think what happened to him was criminal. Well, it's like Pee Wee Herman, right? That was a long time yeah. ago. And a lot and of Pee Wee Herman people, turned out to be a setup. A lot of other people, yeah. oh, really? well, Pee Wee Sir Herman was years and years ago. But, but the thing was that what happened to him, later on, other people did things that were worse and are still working. He was caught, caught up in the Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby that moment. It was a Harvey Weinstein thing, yeah. 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 Speaking of which, uh, you know, I love telling the story, Bobby Slayton, used to uh, tell me that he'd come to New York and say, well, I'm in New York. I can't, I, I can't come to see you because I got oh, too many, bit, too many uh, people I have to see. And I went, oh, okay, that's fine. You know, he says, where you, where you, you know, you're always welcome to stay here. And he says, oh, no, I got this friend puts me up at his, uh, he has an apartment house and he has an uh, apartment and he puts me up there. And I went, oh, good. <laughs> um, then what's his name? This guy who committed Epstein. suicide. Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein gets arrested, right? And I get a call from Slayton and he goes, is that room still available? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, that's the guy that was putting me up. He was oh. a fan of mine. And, uh, and then he said something very incriminating and that was, yeah, he's the guy that introduced me to Woody Allen. Oh, <laughs> you know, oh. but anyway, uh, <laughs> but he said to me, he said, I knew this guy, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. He said, I knew him quite well because he, I met him in, I think it was in Miami because he was, a, he's a fan of mine. He thought he loved my act. And so when I came to New York, he said, come stay here. You know, he said all the time I knew Epstein. I didn't know any of the stuff that's going on. Yeah, that's what they all say. But no, yeah. it, it, no, I believe Bobby. I believe Bobby. Sure, sure. No, I, be, I believe Bobby. He says, I, when, when he finally got arrested, I was amazed. He said, I didn't know any of this was going on. Hmm. So, he never went to the island? Huh? 
No, he never <laughs> went to the island. Or the ranch. But it looks like Clinton may have. Yeah. yeah. Well, he definitely was there. Yeah. There's records of it. Yeah. yeah. So, it was releasing a couple girls. Come on. Yeah. What he did, they don't they can't prove, but he was definitely there. Yeah. But I mean, uh um, you know, how many things how many think he committed suicide or that he was murdered? He's murdered. Murdered? Yeah. I he think. was murdered, yeah. I, yeah. I feel murder too, yeah. Yeah. I would say murdered. Yeah. You're wearing a Jeopardy hat, at, at That's least. right. The new season of Jeopardy starts tonight. It does. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah. Uh, How's he, Alex doing? Is what Alex is, still? Uh, um, he's yeah, still he's doing all right. He's still going, going, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's still in there, hanging in there. I mean, so is my oh. ex-wife, and she had pancreatic cancer. So you know. Yeah. Uh, but jeez, uh, you know. So they're starting tonight. They probably got a lot of them filmed already. So video. Already, yeah, so, yeah. You know. yeah, they're doing it socially distant, apparently. Yeah, like yeah. They separated the players a little. Mm. Well, they were kind of a way away. Actually, you have to do yeah. six feet is yeah. your arm. Yeah. If you're six feet yeah. tall, it's your arm's length. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Yeah, but we were watching Bill Maher, and I think they had him like 12 feet apart, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. um, Boy, am I glad Bill Maher finally got a, got to go back into the studio and have so much better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the fake, the fake be, crowd clapping is pretty funny, though. Yeah, it was not it was becoming it was becoming well. He did not fare yeah. well doing it from home. It was becoming unwatchable. But I yeah. think John Oliver has done okay. John no. Oliver has done, done, done way better. Yeah, yeah much still, better. I'd rather see him with an audience because I found Oh, yeah, but still, his shows have been great. Yeah, but he's still, he still kind of rambles on and on and on and on without pausing because he's not waiting for a laugh. And it's, a, you know, he, he could stand to have an audience again, too, even if it's a small audience. God, think of what Letterman would have to do right now. Oh. Yeah. You know, if he were still on. Do you think what do you guys think of, do you think he's doing the um, Netflix show? What? He'd be doing the Netflix show. The Netflix show, right? Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think of the NFL yesterday? Anybody watch? No. I watched all of them. It looked I fine. Loved, I loved it. I'm a big football. Even the Sunday night game. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was. It, it, you know, the crowd noise they piped in was reasonable. Um, I, I thought it was okay. So I think it was. I think it was game. There was some one of the Fox games where they put the virtual crowd in, and it's like, oh, what are you? Oh, what do you yeah. mean they actually had a virtual crowd in there? Yeah. Or they have the, they have a, shot. It's a cutaway they, shot of the crowds. There's a lot of the, shit. U, the US Open also, they did the same thing. Yeah, but they they they, they, they were they, they those people were on a screen. Were these people on a screen, Jackie? Well, yeah. they'd have well they were on your TV screen. Well what I'm saying is they, I think it's just cards, old, uh, old look, cutaway the, shot. No, no. This is this is right. It's the this is a 49er game with cardboard cutouts, and they had a real life security guy there. No, <laughs> and, and I swear they had a couple of shots before, and I could see the guy in the back. And they had a live security guard there. I'm, what the fuck is he watching? Hey, when the cardboard gets wet, watch out. The rain. Yeah. No, but what happened was, is uh, we were watching tennis, and they had big screens with people zoomed in on the screen. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was one thing. Also, we saw that Drew Barrymore supposedly is starting a talk show today. I think Boy, today. Am, I ready, am I ready for that? But they have a, she has a Zoom audience. A she she screen comes screen. out and she looks at the audience and it's this giant screen with all these people on. So is people, that how she's doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh wow. And, and her guests are in a studio somewhere else. And she sits there in a chair, and they're sitting there in a chair opposite her. And but she—they're not in the same studio. Yeah, they but, stole another green you know, screen. we become very inventive with it, and we've used the technology to figure yeah. out how to do it. Yeah. yeah. So Charlie, how's it going over in Texas there with uh, in your big COVID uh, coven? Thing? I just don't leave the house. I don't blame you. Yeah. Well, he's uh, how old? Are you know, uh, Charlie. I'm seventy. Seventy. So yeah. he's not going out. You know, he doesn't want to get the COVID. No, sir. And uh, Shaggy never goes out. So uh, I got a flu shot today. It was pretty exciting. I got We got our flu shot a couple of weeks ago. Actually. We got it the day that Medicare would accept it. 
Yeah. Uh, I got a flu shot, bought two cannolis, and Chinese food. Very big day. <laughs> yeah. Chinese food. Good. I always give my flu shot the Tuesday after Labor Day. Edward, do you stay in the house or what? No, I go out uh, you know, around the neighborhood. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gee, you know, you could have been a great comic, except that mm. Gilbert Godfrey did build <laughs> beat me well. to it. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Does everybody comment on your voice? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Is that a great voice check or what? That's a, yeah. A, but you know, when he gets off when he gets off your call, he starts he sounds like an opera singer then. Right. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, like like Jim Neighbors. Yeah, uh, cartoon yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like, Jim, like Jim Neighbors, remember? Yeah. Yeah. He's Gomer Popel oh. until he's singing old Indiana at the racetrack or singing, and then all of a sudden he's like an opera singer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh boy. So uh so New York City is gonna start opening restaurants twenty five percent indoors. Inside. With no bars. So there goes uh, the profit. They're not gonna have bars. No bars, but restaurants will be Yeah, but that's where they make their money. Yeah. That's three dollar drink. I think yeah. The yeah. early bird special. Mm. So did you see that Giuliani's son thinks he's going to run for mayor next year now? Oh, my God. Giuliani's oh, son? Giuliani's son. I, the, one who, the one who's the official greeter for Donald Trump at the White House. Oh, God. Uh, was he the one that was born before the prostate operation? <laughs> <laughs> well, his, his mother is the one who got fired at, uh, at a Giuliani rally in 1980. He forgot to tell her we're getting divorced. That we're getting yeah. divorced. He... Oh, yes, I remember, didn't he? I remember he... that. He told Anna had on TV or something. I I heard it yes, he yes Hanover. He was at Bryan Park doing some kind of rally where he announces, you know, she had no idea. And she, I think the, the second wife was standing right next to him. Yeah, Judy, yeah, that Judy, Judy, whatever Judy, her name is. Yeah, something Judy. Well, Judy. you know, I mean, he is Nathan. after all. Judith really. Nathan. He yes. Is, he is America's mayor. Yeah. <laughs> you say mayor or mayor? Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he... You know, but he didn't know that Russian guy who started the whole thing about the Ukraine. He didn't know he was a Russian KGB agent. Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, um, forget about it. What are you doing? Sorry, uh, huh? wait. What are you wait, doing? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I use my watch to stop him from calling me and send it over to voicemail. I have no idea what it is because half the time it's like my 646 area code number, but it's always, you know. Well, and when no, you have to listen to it, it's somebody told Chinese. You, you ever get the Chinese people on the other oh, side yeah. of the line? Oh, yeah. <laughs> area code. Right. I, got, I got one for you. I was sitting here one night watching TV. And on Comcast, you, the phone number that's calling you comes up on the screen. Yeah. And it was my number. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, really? A horror. So I, of course, I answered it to see what I wanted. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and it was a scam call. And I kept them on the phone for 20 minutes easy. And I'm going, oh, yeah, press what? And I'm pressing, and I'm telling them I'm pressing the keys. And then finally, I said, you know, oh, I see what the problem is. And she goes, what? I go, you're a fucking asshole. And she goes, I can't believe you're wasting my time. I said, I'm wasting your time. <laughs> well, I, I always like every now and then if, if it's some... You keep them on. Yo, totally. Most of the time it's a recording and sometimes if I'm having a really boring day and they will say, please press one if you'd like to talk to somebody and I, I press one and then I, I waste their time. I really... What about their dentist time. visits? That'd be good. Huh? Tell them about your dentist visit. Yeah. That yeah. lasts a couple hours. I used to have then Marjorie doesn't have to listen to it. I don't want to hear it. I'll tell you who I've decided are, are the absolute masochists in the business is today I get a, not a robocall, but an actual call from somebody, but I don't pick it up. So I go look at the message and I listen to the message and it's this company that our union tried to get us to buy supplemental insurance oh, via benefits via benefits yeah. and uh, they they i filled out a form and they said how did we do and i said you suck basically <laughs> i 
I said, you know, you're, you're shilling for the union is letting you shill and you're nothing but just low rent insurance salesman. And that's all. And I wrote all kinds of things like that. And what, would you let a friend know about this? Absolutely not. Would you, you know, but how many stars do you give us a zero, right? <laughs> and they call me up to say, we see that you didn't like your experience with us. We'd like to talk to you about it. <laughs> you, what? <laughs> what? What part of this you suck zero 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 zero? Don't you understand? <laughs> so you know. Anyway, so it's, it's you know, uh, but I'm I'm having a good time with this whole. I'm getting my money's worth out of our union fucking us over because I've. <laughs> I, I Did you go out. to that virtual meeting? Well, no. Yeah, we went. That's to in October. Meeting. I'll call you. I'll tell you all about it. We'll have our new insurance before then. Yeah, uh, but we we just uh, 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 there are a bunch of people gone online and are are protesting. It's people like Vincent D'Onofrio and uh, there are. Uh, uh, Who, who's the woman? One of the women. Yeah, I can't think. Taylor who. Swift or something, Francis, right? Francis, somebody who. No, 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 no. The the actress. Um, She's well, saying how, how many, what the percentage of actors work and- Oh, and oh, 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 what's her name? Uh, the uh, black actress uh, 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 who won an Academy Award. Uh, yeah, she has a TV show, I can't remember her name now. She said, she said her, her point was, she said, the average uh, out of people out of work in the United States is 8.4% right now. She said the average amount of actors out of work at any given time is 95%. Yeah. So this is he says, and now you're asking us to pay for our more for our insurance during a pandemic. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's gotten really ugly. So I turned out a one minute little video to give to this group to run as well, where I talked about my experience. But uh, it's uh, there's a big hue and cry about Matthew Modine is a big uh, adversary. Me, and they, they have enough money for three years, but they're cutting us out at the end of uh, one. Yeah. But I can't tell if they're actually indignant about it or they're just acting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing that bothers me, about, let me just tell you something Very quickly that bothers me about this whole thing, is that it's basically actors complaining about this. But I am a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. And so I had add my two cents worth in saying, I never was able to get health insurance from the union because there are no union radio stations left in the country for us to get, you know, our union benefits. You have to make so much money under union in order to get the benefits. The only thing I could do would be voiceovers, things like that. And even most of those aren't union controlled anymore. So uh, for years, the broadcasters, radio announcers have had a real problem even working at an after station. And, and um, so uh, that, that, that really kind of got to me because it's the actors all complaining because, you know, they, they feel they're most impacted. But bro after has fucked, fucked us over for years, you know. So anyway, that's my bitching. That's your bitch. That's my bitch. So in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Wait till the Chinese people call and just bring that one up. You just need to write these down. Write these down. Right when the Chinese people call, just start talking to them about those. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wish I knew the president, name of the president of the union. I'd tell the Chinese people to call her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they get your area code. And then if you pick up the phone, you're talking oh, yeah. Chinese. Yeah, well, I want to know who the idiot is who says, you know what we'll do? We'll call America and then we'll just speak Chinese to them. Yeah. <laughs> that one I don't get. How many of you have gotten a Chinese call? Uh, I got everybody. Have you, Shecky? Yeah. Oh. No, you haven't. Because I don't answer the phone until I know who it oh. is. Oh, I see. Me oh. too. Me too. Unless there's a name on there. You yeah, well, know, your number I know, a couple other people's numbers I know. And if not, I wait till it. Well, I've got Those something that tells me when it's when it's spam, and one time it said it was spam, and it was the hospital trying to call me about my procedure the next day. You know. Oh no! I had a call, Alex, from a, a guy with a deep Indian accent from the online pharmacy. So I had him looking up my prescription to Damitol. He, he couldn't find it. 
And then I said, you know, I think we're having a communication problem here. This was like 15 minutes into the call. I'm just going to spell the other one because it's obvious that you, you're not understanding. So I hear him clicking on the keyboard, K-I-Z-M-Y-A-Z. <laughs> I don't find this one either. And well, read it back to me. He goes, kiss my ass. Oh, <laughs> you're a bad person. And he hung up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, hey, listen. Another hour has gone by. I love another it. hour. Can you know, the, the whole. Do you know we have not said one single word all. Yeah. Hour. Don't mention it. Don't, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't, don't say it. I won't don't say it. A show without that name being said. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Beetlejuice. Hmm. Was that the word Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody said Beetlejuice, so we're safe. Hey, Edward. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Steve Bender, thank you. Shecky, always a pleasure having you here. I'll call you a table when, when I, yeah. I'll bore you with that one. Uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you. Thank you to Lynn. Thank you to Brian Neary. And also thank Adrian Forrest for that special appearance. Uh, Andrew Deutsch, thank you. And I didn't hear my name. Whoever that broad is. <laughs> <laughs> If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Bye, everybody. I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay.